Hello internet world and welcome to my day. Now, today's video is gonna be both a rant followed by a story afterwards. I'm gonna get the rant out of the way first. Now, I will apologize to you all because sometimes I feel like I'm doing videos, I'm chatting to you guys and girls, and I'm talking about something that's obviously important to me, means something to me, but might not necessarily to you. But I'm gonna tell you anyway, and this rant, I'm sure a lot of you will be familiar with the situation and maybe sympathize with me, or maybe say, hey, that happens to me all the time. So here we go, let's sit, set the scene. I was almost rude to this person as well, and I'm not normally rude to anyone or short-tempered, especially when it's somebody that, who doesn't necessarily uh, deserve to be on the receiving end of it. So this is what happened. Knock, knock, knock on my door. Open the door, and let's call this guy John from X Company and he introduces himself very politely, and then the words that come out of his mouth are, I'm calling round on behalf of a government initiative, and I'm thinking, here we go again, to see if you are entitled to a grant to get cavity wall insulation and loft insulation. My response, because this happens so often, so, so often, and it really does annoy me, it, not just once a week, probably four times a week, it is ridiculous. So my response was, hey, I'm really sorry, but I've already got cavity wall insulation done, my loft is already done, and somebody from different company knocks on my door three or four times a week, and I don't need it, thank you very much. And then I suddenly realized, right, don't be quite so rude, because he doesn't know somebody knocked the other day and he's only doing his job. So I said, um, I sort of followed it up by something like, you know, I wish you good luck though, you know, good luck with the other doors you knock on, but I don't need anything. Instead of walking away, he then says, oh, well, we just need to check uh, so that we can make a note of it, uh, that you have got the required minimum height of loft insulation, and he still tried to sell it. And that was when I said, look, I've already told you, I've got it, I don't want it, thank you. And then I started to close the door gently, and he said goodbye, so I wasn't rude, I was just sort of firm. But this happens so, so often. Just two days ago, I had somebody else knock on my door from a home improvement company. They were something windows. I won't name them, there's no point in it because there's just so many that knock on the door. And my house has got double glazed windows, new double glazed windows, and a double glazed door, and two other smaller double glazed windows. And if they did go around the back, not that they could because there's a security gate, but they would see there's double glazed windows on the back as well. So all done. And he's asking if we need any home improvements for double glazed windows, cavity wall insulation and loft insulation again. To which my response was, well, you can see we've got double glazing and my brother is in the business. And if we ever do anything like that, we do it ourselves and the loft insulation's done, cavity wall insulation's done, and again, instead of just saying, well, thank you, sorry to trouble you, he handed me a leaflet and said, well, if you ever change your mind and you want something done by another company, then please do give us a call. And I'm like, why have you given me a leaflet? I just told you we would do the work ourselves, you know, don't knock on my door. And what adds insult to injury is that on my front door, it says no free leaflets, no cold callers, and still they bloody knock on my door. And that really annoys me. So I have to refrain every time and try and be polite and articulate in the way I speak to them because after all, they don't know. So anyway, if you're familiar with that experience, let me know in the comment section below and let me know how you deal with it. So I'm gonna now tell you the little story. And this story was actually, I walked to do a drop off of a parcel and on my walk back home, I was walking behind. Uh, there was uh, two girls on one side of the road. One of them was probably about 16, 17. I'm just setting the scene for you here. And the girl on the opposite side of the road was probably about 11 or 12. Now, I'm going to not include all the swear words because there were a lot of swear words in their conversation. But the conversation went something like this. The 11 year old girl was talking and said, Oh, I was going to get an iPhone 6 the other day, but I'm not going to get one now. Other girl, why not? Why aren't you getting an iPhone 6 now? Girl on the opposite side of the road, the 11-year-old, because I read 
online that it burnt someone's leg. They always get hot, the iPhone 6s. The older girl, yeah, iPhones are crap nowadays. Best avoid them, get something else instead. 11 year old girl, yeah, I'm not gonna spend 600 pound on a phone that burns my leg. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And the conversation sort of went on a little bit more than that. But I'm thinking, one, where did they get the information? You know, was it from some totally irresponsible journalism saying that one phone burnt someone's leg and therefore every single iPhone has got a problem? Uh, similar to the Bengate issue, you know, very few cases of phones bending and all of a sudden it's a big issue, you know. And I was just shaking my head thinking, so, you know, these are, are youngsters. One, they can afford £600 on an iPhone 6 or, or consider spending that amount on an iPhone 6. And now they're totally, you know, throwing that out of the equation purely because they heard or read somewhere that it burnt somebody. Unbelievable, just just crazy. Nice little story though that I just wanted to share with you. And it sort of got me thinking how these news stories online obviously do filter through to lots of different people, even if it's not on mainstream news, if it's just on a few websites and it starts getting tweets, you know, people do retweet these stories. So you've got to be responsible as to what you actually tweet, you know, and don't tweet inaccurate things or don't write about inaccurate things and don't blow things out of proportion because it really does filter down to people who are buying these products, not just techie and geeky people like me, you know, and you probably, you're, you're in the loop with me, sort of reading up on technology all the time. So, you know, it just made me think and I wanted to share that with you. So that is my day. I've done plenty of recordings now. I've also done the unboxing on the Samsung Galaxy Note 4, which will be on the channel by the time you watch this video. So please do check that out. Thanks very much for watching. I hope you've had a fantastic day. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video, of course, and I'll see you again tomorrow.